My name is John Tosh, and I'd like to say something about the kind of historian that I am. Uh, it's, quite, it's quite a complicated answer, because, uh, because as of now, I'm two kinds of historian at once. I have an interest uh, in, in public history as the label that we attach to those forms of history which don't stay strictly within academe. Um, but it's a term which tends to be used for very, mu very much extramural kinds of history in museums and heritage sites and so on, where the role of historians like me uh, may seem rather marginal. And I'm interested in the ways in which historians can, as it were, um, uh, support a public history initiative that stems from their own concerns. Um, but in addition to that, I'm, I'm, I'm a gender historian, um, and my particular area is the history of uh, masculinities in modern Britain. A concern which arose um, as a response to feminism, not a reaction against it, but uh, a realization that if, um, if in the historical record we started making a, a, a specific category for women, that changed the way we thought about men as not simply being ungendered beings, but as people carrying a gender, a gender of masculinity, which affects their ideals, their motives, and their actions. So I then started working on the history of the Victorian family from the point of view of middle class men. And more recently, I've been looking at the history of the British Empire as, if you like, an exercise in, in gender um, and investigating the relationship between British expansion and uh, uh, masculinities in, in Britain. Uh, I'm currently working on an emigration scheme in 1820 that brought 4,000 British settlers fr from this country to South Africa, uh, looking at the gender composition and the gender motives of the people who were involved. Um, now, these two areas are not what I've always done as a historian. I started my career as a research historian in an entirely different field, namely that of uh, African history, uh, spanning the pre-colonial and colonial eras in East Africa. Uh, that was in my 20s. And then in my 30s, I got uh, heavily involved in thinking about and writing about historiography and particularly the historiographical issues that students uh, need to know about or could, could with advantage uh, know about in terms of evaluating their own study. And I wrote a, a standard textbook at that time uh, which pursued um, that agenda, which I've continued to pursue in my teaching and writing ever since. And I think that this um, uh, diversity of practice in my own case uh, raises one or two interesting more general questions. Um, first of all, history as a discipline, in a way, it lends itself to uh, this kind of variety. Um, we all know that, that history is the history of everything that's been done, thought and said uh, throughout the millennia, in theory. Uh, in practice, what that means is that we as historians tend to focus on quite narrow concerns for research purposes. My contention has always been that there's something to be gained from moving from one area to another uh, with a fresh mind. Uh, and able perhaps to pose questions and to figure out um, uh, subjects worthy of inquiry uh, that wouldn't have been uh, f figured out otherwise. And I think that's what happened in the case of the history of masculinity where I was, as it were, in at the beginning, making a fairly radical change from my earlier practice and able to formulate some new and important questions. Um, the other... Um, more general issue which I think arises from my own rather curious uh, track record is that if there's anything that um, that binds together these different kinds of history uh, on my part it's been s some kind of reaching towards the idea that history is a socially relevant form of knowledge. Um, that may sound a fairly obvious and banal thing to say but if you think about the practice of most historians there's often not very much uh, connecting up with the idea of a message that has any kind of practical or uh, social relevance to readers. When I started out in African history um, in the 1960s, um, there was very much a sense that this was a new area of history that was needed because none existed. That's to say, the amount of documented knowledge about the African past at that time was very, very small. And African countries entering independence needed to have uh, a purchase on their own past. And then when I started thinking about the history of uh, masculinities, uh, I did so from a context where much 
debate and writing was being done about men and masculinity, but with virtually no historical context whatever. And it seemed to me that our understanding of these issues was going to be very much uh, um, uh, 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 delayed and, and, and qualified if we weren't able to supply the sorts of insight which understanding the nature of masculinities over time uh, would provide. Um, and in the case of my historiographical interests, uh, if I go back to the textbook that I wrote, uh, The Pursuit of History, uh, the chapter in that book which I found most challenging and most difficult and ultimately most satisfying was the chapter which tried to define what is the social relevance of history. Because when I started writing it, there was actually not a great deal to go on in terms of informed and thoughtful, and in some cases radical, uh, reflections um, on that topic. So when I look back on what I've done over the decades and what I could continue to do now, that is the continuing guiding thread.